Hello friends of the Iowa Food and Family Project. My name is Kelsey Burns and I am the blogger over at dancearoundthekitchen.com and today I'm here to show you how to make the best mashed potatoes and gravy. To get started we're going to talk about the best type of potato to use. My potato of choice is russet potatoes. Russet potatoes are the ones with kind of the dark brown exterior and they are really the most starchy potato and they're going to give you the most fluffy result. You can also choose kind of a mixture of russet and Yukon Gold. Yukon Gold does have a little bit more of a buttery flavor, but it also is a more waxy texture. So I tend to steer toward using just 100% russet potatoes and that's what we're going to do today. Once you have chosen your potato, you want to peel and cube them. So once they're cubed, you're gonna go ahead and boil them. Now, I always put my cubed potatoes in cold water. And you wanna start with cold water because they really need that time to warm the water up and cook the potatoes all the way through. If you start with hot water, you might run into the problem of having the outside of your potatoes cooked, but the inside is still raw. So you wanna make sure you start with cold water. It's also really important that you salt the water for potatoes. Just like um, when you're cooking pasta, for example, you're gonna start with salted water so it gives it some flavor the whole way through the recipe. And we're gonna do the same thing when boiling potatoes. After you boil the potatoes and they're fork tender, it's time to mash them. And let me show you what I like to do. So, I just finished cooking the potatoes and they are nice and fork tender. Now, I went ahead and removed all the water, so I strained it, and then I also set my pot back on the warm burner, and that's gonna help all the rest of the liquid evaporate. Now, the reason we do that is simply because we don't want our mashed potatoes to be watery. We want them to have all the room to soak up the butter and cream or milk or whatever you're using for your potatoes. So. I just got these off the burner so they're nice and soft and I'm going to add room temperature butter. Um, you want to use it room temperature because you don't want cold ingredients to make your mashed potatoes cool. So I'm going to go ahead and mash these up. Now it's important that you don't over mash your potatoes. Um, the more you work with your starch, the more gluey or gummy it can get. So we want really nice and fluffy mashed potatoes, so we are not going to overwork them. Now, my butter is melted, of course, now that it's gotten into the hot potatoes, and I'm gonna add hot milk. Now, once again, just like with the butter, you wanna start with hot ingredients, so your finished product is also going to be hot. Nobody wants to have cold mashed potatoes. So, I added some milk in there, you can also opt for heavy whipping cream or half and half. It really just depends on um, what you've got and how creamy you want your mashed potatoes. So of course, a heavy cream is gonna give you really rich, luxurious mashed potatoes. I am sticking with milk because that's what I have in my fridge typically. So now I've got nice, smooth, and creamy mashed potatoes. Now I wanna make sure, like I said, I'm not over mixing them. So they're smooth, I've got my liquids and my butter mixed in, and so I'm gonna stop right there. I don't wanna overdo it. So I've got my mashed potatoes. Um, you also wanna taste it to see if you need to add any more salt. So salt it to taste, you can add some pepper if you'd like, um, and any other flavors that you would like as well. So now that my mashed potatoes are done, it's important to work on the gravy because I don't know if anyone's like me, but I really feel like the mashed potatoes are just a vessel for the gravy. Let's talk about making the very best gravy. As you can see, I have cooked a turkey. Now, no matter what protein you're working with, whether it be beef, pork, turkey, chicken, lamb, whatever kind of, whatever kind of protein you're working with, you're gonna have some drippings at the bottom of your pan after cooking that meat. So, we're gonna take those drippings and we're gonna turn them into gravy. A few tips when working with gravy. So you're gonna start with your drippings or your broth and you're gonna put it in a pan. Now you wanna get that nice and hot before you start adding your thickener. 
For thickener, I like to use a mixture of cold water and cornstarch. And we're not going to add that to the drippings until the cornstarch is totally dispersed and dissolved into the water. Now, when you're adding that into your broth or your drippings, you want to make sure you're adding just a little bit at a time to avoid over thickening gravy. Nobody wants a super goopy or thick gravy on their mashed potatoes. So add just a little bit at a time to make sure you can make it to that perfect consistency that you like. Now, we also wanna make sure that we're always mixing our gravy with a whisk. Um, you really want to use a whisk because it's gonna avoid having lumps in your gravy. Now, I want to show you the finished product. So we have this lovely bowl of mashed potatoes. I added a little bit more butter on top just because I think it makes it look kind of pretty. I also sprinkled some parsley. I really also like chives or green onions on top for a pop of color and a little pop of flavor. Um, let's go ahead and scoop up some mashed potatoes and gravy. So I've got my really nice smooth mashed potatoes here and I like to give a little, put a little spot here for my gravy. Now one other tip when working with gravy is that if you let it sit too long, it is going to have a little bit of a film on top. So what I do is I put it in my serving dish and then I'm just gonna place a sheet of plastic wrap on top of the gravy. So that way it's not going to form a film. So when it's time to serve, I'm simply just going to take that off and it is ready to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of this gravy right on my mashed potatoes. And you can see it's nice and hot and smooth and ready to devour. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time.